welcome to our kitchen. We're the Hasswells. I'm Dana. This is Jessie. And we're going to make tiramisu today. It's from my favourite cookbook, the Tanya Beggs book. Problem with this is it's not gluten free and it's kind of impossible to find gluten free sponge fingers, especially chocolate ones, which is what this recipe calls for. It is possible to get the, the normal plain sponge fingers if you search around in IGAs and all that sort of thing in Australia. It's the Shah brand, I think, that makes them. Mm. But I couldn't be bothered searching for all that, so I'm just going to make a cake from scratch, which is where recipe book number two comes in. The good old classic day to day cookery. And we're just going to make a plain chocolate cake from that. For starters, if you've got the sponge fingers already, you can skip to the part where we start assembling the tiramisu. I'll put in a chapter or a timestamp or something for you so you can find that easily. For the rest of us who don't have gluten free sponge fingers, we're going to start making a cake. Firstly, we need 125 grams of butter. Mm -hmm. That's about 68. You've got a big knife. This is so much nicer. Last time I did this, I had to use my brute strength. <laughs> Close. And now we're going to heat this up a little bit in the microwave because it came straight out of the fridge and it's rock hard. And now we need two thirds of a cup of caster sugar. Would you like to do the honors? Two thirds of a cup. <laughs> I'd say that's about right. <laughs> and then as per the start of every baking recipe, we need to cream those together. Now we need to add two large eggs and some vanilla. <laughs> now we've got to beat them. And now here's a recipe that I understand. If you saw my last video, you'll know my feelings on the accuracy of vanilla and how much you add to a recipe. This one just says vanilla. You know what to do. More than enough. <laughs> Next we need some gluten-free self-raising flour or normal self-raising flour if you're making a non-gluten-free version. We need two cups of this, which will add alternately, oops, I'm making a mess already, but that's half the fun of cooking, right? <laughs> alternately with milk. So that is one cup. Starting to look a bit cake batterish. In here, <laughs> sneezing in the background. <laughs> Saw that flour that I just sprayed everywhere and went up Jesse's nose. <laughs> Now's the time to preheat that oven that you forgot to preheat at the start. It says a moderate oven, which is 180 to 190 Celsius, but my oven's really hot, so I've gone for somewhere around the 150 mark. And fingers crossed. While Jesse regathers himself, I'll carry on. So we need three tablespoons of cocoa to turn this into a chocolate cake. Alright, I'm back. Ready to help. How can I be of assistance? <laughs> I'll need you for the honey in a second, honey. Okay. And we also need two teaspoons of honey. Uh, I'm using Manuka honey because that's what I had in the cupboard, but I'm sure any honey will do. Come here, honey. <laughs> Trick. Wait for an hour. You could wait for an hour, or you could get a second spoon in on the action. Thank you. And then wait for an hour for it to get off that spoon. <laughs> a third spoon is required. Don't worry, I came prepared. <laughs> Endless spoons are required for this recipe. <laughs> One. That together. Sounds like a plan. We're going to get some baking paper on this. I am denied over whether to use a round one or a, a bar tin because of what I'll be putting them in later, which I'm doing for the first time, so anything could happen. But I've decided on the bar tin, and if you need my tips for how to put baking paper into a bar tin more easily, Watch the previous video with the banana bread because there's a whole segment in there. Now we pour it into the pan. 
and we'll smoosh it into the edges. And now into the oven for about 40 minutes, but I think I'll check it a lot because gluten-free flour plus bar tin plus it's just safer. So I'll put it on for 25 minutes, I'll have a peek then and go from there. While that's in the oven, we'll move on to book number two. The recipe in question is a Bailey's tiramisu. I don't actually have Bailey's, but I do have Irish country cream, so that'll do the job. We also need some coffee for this recipe, so I pulled a shot earlier and it's just been cooling off the whole time with my handy dandy espresso machine. It says 300 mils of coffee. I've gone with 150 to start with and we'll see how we go. I like to live on the conservative side. And we'll have the amount of Baileys that's going in here as well, which is 70 mil. You need to save some Baileys or Irish cream to go in the cream layering part of the tiramisu as well. So don't use it all in the coffee. So save this for once the cake's done because we'll need to dip the cake in that. And we need some cream and some mascarpone. So we'll start with the whipped cream. You can obviously use non-UHT cream, but mine was always going off before I got to it, so I just started buying these. That was 250 mils of cream. We're just going to whip this. Don't over whip cream because it turns to butter and you will not have the desired result. That's my tip. So when it starts to look pretty whipped, stop. <laughs> See those nice little peaks? That's what you want. It's always so cool how something so runny with the use of this thing can turn into something so thick. Science man. So next we need to add in the mascarpone, which is also 250 grams. Now I can't promise that this recipe is authentically Italian because I'm not Italian and I imagine Tanya Burr is not Italian either, but I can promise it tastes good. Getting my handy assistant to do all the work. Do about 5% of the work. <laughs> Look ladies, if you can get your man to do 5% of the work, then that's pretty good going. <laughs> all right, what next? Then we need 75 grams of caster sugar. So get out your friend the scales. Mm -hmm. Put in our 60 mils-ish of Baileys. I ran out of Baileys before we got to 60, but it'll still taste good. You need to save some Baileys. Don't use it all in the coffee. Or Omaras, should I say. I've given Baileys a lot of advertising in this and I haven't even used Baileys. They didn't pay for any advertising. <laughs> Nobody paid me for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he took it away! <laughs> now that's looking and feeling pretty thick. This little mixture is like one of the most delicious things on the planet. Here are some beaters that I would like to lick all day. But I'll share because that's love. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is good. Uh huh. Let's just forget about the cake. We'll just, just make that next time. Put it in a bowl. <laughs> so the cake buzzed and it wasn't ready yet. So I put it in for another 10 minutes, which will be 35 all up. Such is the trial and error of baking. And I think that'll do the trick. So we'll pop this onto a cooling rack. Get the baking paper off and we'll leave it to cool for a little bit because then we're going to have to cut this up so um, we don't want it to crumble completely apart. So now we need to slice up the cake in such a way that it'll hopefully easily fit in whatever you're going to put it in. I'm going to try and put it in these ramekins this time. Normally I would just put it in a big dish and cut it up to serve but I'm going to try doing it in little serving sizes and see how we go. Wish me luck. So we're going to pour our little Baileys and coffee mixture from earlier into a bowl to make it easier to dip the cake into. If you don't want to put alcohol in it, or you don't like Baileys, or you don't have Baileys, or any kind of Irish cream, you can just use coffee, which is what I used to do before I had any Irish cream in the house. I'm sure you could probably use chocolate as well if you wanted. So we're going to dip these in here, and then put them in there, and just do a thin layer for the bottom. And then just grab little pieces of cake to fill in the bottom layer until you're happy. 
Rip them, dip them and smush them. That's my principle. We might just do the first one uh, as a trial and make sure it's all good and then we'll continue from there. So once you've got your cake smushed into the bottom of your receptacle, you need to put in a layer of the delicious cream mixture and we'll smush that down as well. Make sure it gets in all the cracks. And then we need to add some more sponge fingers. If you want a better, more spongy result, probably cut off all the rough edges of the cake if you've made it. They'll go in much easier, much softer, if you don't have the hard edges of the cake. You make the second layer a little bit thicker. And once you're happy with your second layer, put in the final layer of the cream mixture on top, do some more smooshing. And once you're happy with that, you're almost done. You're just supposed to put it in the fridge for two hours and then serve it. And as you serve it, you can sprinkle it with a dusting of cocoa as well. If you do it beforehand, it just kind of mixes into the cream a bit, which is fine, it still tastes good, just doesn't look as good, so up to you. And then my little secret with the cocoa is if you use a tea infuser like this, you can just grab out a little bit of cocoa and dust it on top. Ta-da, you've made tiramisu. That's going to be it for today's video. I'll just finish up all the rest of them after this. Should we taste test it before we put it in the fridge? I reckon we give it a shot. Why not? <laughs> mm. Oh, yes. You have dessert for lunch? Yes, we will. So definitely make this. If you've got a sweet tooth like me, it is delicious. Let us know if you make it, how it goes, um, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs> On to making the cream mixture. So that is one cup. I just put flour on my bum. Don't kill us. <laughs> Did you say you cut your you cut your tongue? <laughs> no. I licked them so vigorously that I got a sore tongue. The perils of licking the beaches, children. <laughs> Actually, the children would probably be fine. Adults, be careful. <laughs> Man, actually doing cleaning. Oh god! Half <laughs> it went everywhere. You need to save some bay leaves for going in the actual uh, creamy tiramisu layery mixture. <laughs> Words. You need to start. You need to save some tiramisu to go in the actual layering cream mixture of the. Did I say tiramisu?